Hey friend, it's me Vasco with a quick announcement. We at the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast are organizing this year's Scrum Master Summit. For tickets and details on the summit, check out the URL bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. All one word S-M-S-U-M-M-I-T 22. And now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday. This week with Stan Willemsen. Hi, Stan. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. And for those of you who haven't yet, please listen to yesterday's episode. It was inspiring. At least for me, it was very inspiring. So definitely worth a listen. But today we dive into success. We talked about success also yesterday. That's why it came to mind. We're talking about success of the Scrum Master, right? Like we're talking about self-reflection and defining our own vision, our own North Star uh, of what we are trying to achieve. But before we dive into that, Stan, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite retrospective format and why? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. And I, I would really like to come up with something that sounds really, really smart. But if I'm to be completely honest, I really, really like the format of the retrospective where you start out with asking, you you, are you, uh, you invite every participant to bring a piece of paper and, uh, and a marker, and you would ask if the sprint was a car, which car would it be and why? And they start drawing and, you know, that gives them time to reflect and so on. And someone will draw, uh, you know, like a skateboard instead, and some will draw a truck and so on. But it really, it spawns the conversation very, very well in terms of, okay, so why is it, you know, why are we at a VW camper and not a Ferrari, right? And that that really brings a lot of different perspectives in, uh, is my experience with it. And the next part of that retro would be to say, you know, okay, and then if you could, pro, you know, put one upgrade to that vehicle, what would be most valuable and why? So they get to not only reflect on the past, but also say, okay, so we don't want to, you know, everything doesn't have to be a Jaguar. But if I could just add one thing in the next sprint or the next period, what would that be? And it's easy to also to, to deduct uh, one or more actions from that, right? Because the team will inspire one or another with, with those good uh, thoughts. And then, uh, then we can align on what to focus on in the next period. And it makes some cool drawings to share afterwards. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I, I was going to say that the, the the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is is that metaphorical thinking, uh, meaning you know using the car as the metaphor for whatever the sprint was, uh, can enable a lot of creativity. But even if it doesn't, it's going to be so much fun, right? Like when people show up, whatever their impression of a car looks like, and then everybody starts laughing and asking, why, why does your car have one wheel bigger than the other? And <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Why do you need wings in your car? And <laughs> what, what, why do you have a, a what is it, a lifesaver on the door of the car or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Like All of those things come up and, and it can be so much fun, relaxing, but also insightful to have those conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's my favorite uh, retrospective, I think. Absolutely. It's great retrospective format. And uh, of course, we do this. We try to enable great conversations and even funny conversations as well, uh, because we want to help teams succeed. And in order to do that, we have to be great Scrum Masters. And that's what we talk about next. And so what does it mean for you to be a successful Scrum Master? Hmm. And that's that's a that's a super relevant question, and I think my elusive answer would be it's probably different for everyone. So I would my my initial, and if I were to coach a bit on finding your answer to that question, it would resonate very well with uh, with what we talked about yesterday, namely in terms of sitting down and spending time and painting the picture for yourself on what does your success look like. So for and I and you know to my point on that is probably different for everyone. For some, it would be mean you know a means to progress uh, career-wise. For some, it's to have your first team up and running in an efficient and high-performance manner. And uh, yeah, so it can be different for anyone. So I really think it's important for you as an individual to sit down and think about what does success mean uh, mean to you. Because it's different and you don't get it from the Scrum Guide and you don't get it. And you might get some input from your from your line manager or something like that, right? But it's it's very personal. 
so that answer, I'm sure, made me sound more like a politician than a scrum master, right? <laughs> no, you don't get away with that so <laughs> easily, of course, because I imagine you did that thinking and that picturing, and we want to hear what that is for you. Great. So I and uh, you know, two things come to mind initially. One is very uh, practical, I would say, when it comes to uh, uh, running things in in an agile way. For me. It's around sorry predictability of output from the team. It's very much you know getting away from the guesswork on you know how much are we able to manage within a sprint or within a period of time and so on and so forth. But you know when you have that heightened sense, uh, not sense, but you, when you have that heightened uh, pre predictability and you can you know know what to expect to come out of the the sprint or the period or whatever. That's really a success indicator for me because that means, you know, to have that kind of predictability, that means there's a lot of things that has to be in place already, right? Because it's never stronger than the weakest link and so on and so forth. And I think uh, that's where the team really shines is when they deliver what they, uh, you know, what they set out to do or what provides most value in agreement with our stakeholders. So I want the product owner or whoever the, the people sort of uh, taking the, the tasks uh, or implementing the tasks uh, that we do to be able to rely on us. And because, yeah, there's so much in, in it, it also uh, underlines the team's uh, commitment to what they set out to do and so on. And to have that kind of commitment, we need to have a strong culture. And to have a strong culture, you may, I mean, there's so many layers to it before you hit that, that high level of uh, predictability. So that's the one thing that, that comes to me first is that. And then another success indicator to me personally is when I can begin to step away from the, uh, the product team and not being, you know, as not needed to be as close to them as I maybe was initially. So previous this week, we talked about uh, coaching in many different directions, spending your time with the team, spending time with the product uh, owner and the organization, uh, probably leadership teams and so on and so forth. So when I can see that I can sort of ease my foot off the pedal with the team because they are self-sustained, right? They have gained that momentum to drive things themselves. And, uh, and I can, you know, with a with a with a good conscience, uh, go and uh, support the product owner in his uh, what do I know marketing efforts in uh, in uh, you know making his product shine in his part of the organization. Then I think I'm a success. Absolutely, I I like how you use the car metaphor again, taking the foot off the pedal. I wanted to take that thought that you just mentioned, like I can start to step away from the team and 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 also refer to what you also alluded to is that we can't really be coaching the other people around the team, like you know other teams, other organization parts, uh, other stakeholders, product owner. We can't be devoting attention to these interactions if we need to be 100% all the time with the team. And that's why, for me, it's so important to be able to step away, right? Like when you trust that the team can take over the sprint planning in case you need to be in a very important meeting with stakeholders to manage expectations about how to interact with the team and when not to interrupt and when they are okay to interrupt and like, or, or, or even helping stakeholders to verbalize and communicate feedback because sometimes that's very hard to get going, especially when starting with stakeholders that haven't had a lot of experience with agile teams and so on. Like we can't do all of those other things that we need to do if we need to be fully in the team, like 100% in, in, in the team and, and taking into account only the team's needs and the team's interactions and so on. And of course, this gets worse if you're working with two or three teams and, and have no time to look outside the team. So I think that the, the second part, being able to step away from the work with the team is a very key enabler for a second aspect that is also very important of the Scrum Master work which is working with the surroundings of the team. Absolutely. And it actually reminds me of a phrase that, uh, that stuck with me when the uh, Scrum Guide was updated uh, a couple of years back, right, where they changed the wording on leadership. And, and to me, it boils down to, if I'm, I'm just to put it in, you know, with my poor English skills, it sort of uh, changed from it's you, Mr. Scrum Master, who has to remove all the impediments for the team to it's you, Mr. Scrum Master, who's enabling the team to get over those impediments themselves. And I really like that, uh, that distinction and that kind of thinking. 
it's always thinking how can I best enable the people around me to uh, you know to support the, the 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 higher purpose or the bigger cause, right? Absolutely, and uh, a great phrase to keep in mind. Thank you for sharing that, Stan. Absolutely. Hey friends, it's Vasco again, now with a bit longer announcement. I'm part of the team that is behind the Global Scrum Master Summit, the conference dedicated to the Scrum Master role. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is the place to learn, to share, and of course, to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from the whole globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. We have several amazing key notes and seven tracks that feature people like you and of course thought leaders sharing their insights their knowledge and helping you become an awesome scrum master you can check out all of the details of the summit including the keynotes announced the track chairs and much more at bit.ly forward slash sm summit 22 that's all one word that's bit.ly forward slash sm s-u-m-m-i-t and the numeral 2-2 i'll see you on the conference floor